Okay. Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh, the 50th anniversary edition. Uh, this had the introduction with uh, Reeve Lindbergh, her daughter, and it's also got an afterword that was in previous uh, versions that she wrote 20 years, the author, Anne Morrow Lindbergh, wrote 20 years after she wrote this book. This book came out in 1955. I think that's right. Let me just, yeah, 1955. This is a great little read and this is coming from a, a male perspective too i mean she wrote which is a unique as you, you might find it interesting it, i found this uh on a list uh that 30 books men need to read before they turn 30 and i was surprised to find out that a lot of what she wrote about in this book was related to womanhood and mo being in motherhood and and ro gender roles and uh some really uh, interesting subjects for 1955 um and so you would think it wouldn't really speak to the male perspective or we wouldn't be able to relate to it a whole lot. But what I actually found is that what she talks about really translates across genders completely. And uh, she really writes essays. She, she's visited the beach. She's at a cottage and she's in peace and tranquility. And she writes these essays about different subjects that are inspired by seashells that she finds on the shore. On the shore. And... Um, each uh, shell represents something to her, and she writes her thoughts about it in a beautiful way. I mean, some of the writing in, in this book is just so elegant and so illustrative. Uh, some of the sentences really just capture your uh, senses. You know, she's a beautiful writer, so some of the, some of the sentences are just very poetic. But she, she contemplates her role in uh, society, her role as a mother... Uh, she tackles some issues like contentment and solitude and learning about oneself and judging oneself and also ultimately just trying to figure out spiritually how to get inside spiritually uh, health, as healthy as a physical outside. Uh, so she really goes through a bunch of different areas during this time of peace and tranquility, even observing the way that the oceans move in and out. She references that as inspiration, and I've actually recently heard the ocean being representative of the way that we should be as people, and she describes it as letting things flow in and out without judgment. She uh, really praises the present moment as valuable, and uh, I found that so interesting. It actually references a lot of what uh, Eckhart Tolle writes about, and she mentioned him in the book, so I would like to know how much of an inspiration he was to her that would be I'd be curious to know that but uh, but I, I, ultimately this book you can feel the peace and the solitude come through in the writing pace and the style and the, it's like if you want to relax read this book I mean this is like you, you feel like you're at the beach reading it um, so the essays really cover a bunch of different subjects um, youth and age love and marriage peace solitude contentment um, and oh and also the trappings of modernity it's a tough word but modernity uh if only she talks about the modern world this is 1955 being fast paced and being um distracting and uh, full of busyness and rushing and hurrying and uh, i'm almost laughing reading it from from her perspective in 1955 if only she knew what was to come in our modern world and then that led to me thinking, well, it's every generation. Do they just feel like, you know, our time is the fastest? and Or is it truly sped up? And I do think it's sped up. But uh, compared to the 1955, oh, if she would have known what was to come and how busy our lives would be compared to how busy hers were, her, her life was. But even, you know, what's interesting, too, at the end here, she writes an afterword, and it's 20 years later after she's read, written the original essays in this book, and she uh, comments on her naivety about uh, not knowing uh, that uh, the impacts that 20 years would have on women's uh, roles in society, where she thought in 1955 their, her grandmother's generation had paved the way for women. She said in the next 20 years, from 55 to 75, it was leaps and bounds, and she just thought that they had won the battle in 1955. So it's kind of interesting to see the, the before and after um, from her 20 years later, still contemplative of her writings. But it was so great. I mean, and even really marriage relationships, she talks about it as well. 
uh, and her, her role in the marriage and then how love changes over time and having to choose love versus love in the beginning and as life gets hard choosing to love versus not and when do you stop loving and when do you give love. I mean even uh, in the afterwards she talks about how her kids are grown now and what she didn't anticipate in her initial writings was that finding a new role in life after the kids are gone has been a struggle and she said it was the biggest struggle so far more of a struggle than what she wrote in 1955 so it's really interesting to have the the afterword uh, from her to, to provide wisdom for what we just read so I thought it was really great and some of the some of the quotes I kept um, women need solitude in order to find the true essence of themselves and she actually compared men more naturally take time for solitude and they're more single focused when they're working on something and she said women need that solitude in order to find the true essence of themselves so we're not very different from one another men and women uh, she says don't wish me happiness i don't expect to be happy all the time it's gotten beyond that somehow but wish me courage and strength and a sense of humor i will need them all i thought that was such a cool perspective don't wish me happiness Wish me the courage and the strength to do what I need to do in order to achieve it. What a, what a wise something that comes from decades of living. Um, I thought it was a great epiphany and beautifully written. There, there are, in fact, certain roads that one may follow. Simplification of life is one of them. That was one of the core themes in this book. She kept implying the simplification would answer a lot of the busyness and hurriness and, and uh stress that we cause ourselves in everyday life and it's as simple as just simplifying things and sitting and being slow and being intentional and not crowding our lives yeah we can go from soccer games to eating lunch to fixing lunch to cleaning it up to you know just staying busy all the time but you have to create moments of solitude amidst all the chaos to be present and to love and live and enjoy and be happy during all the the hurriedness so simplification was a theme in the book that i really took away and um, if you love natural history or nature you know it talks a lot about the different types of she the uh, <laughs> seashells and uh, and then of course reflects on uh, a whole variety of different subjects but uh, anyway if, if, if you like books about solitude and learning about yourself and um, how to live a, a more balanced life and a, and a more well-paced life and uh, see somebody's uh, wisdom through an experience of reflection on the beach you'll love this book um, so it was very, it was a beautiful little book. Would I keep this book? Um, it's not my preference of a book that I like to keep. I don't like to reread books like this just because it's a, it's a short period of time. I love to keep books that cover, you know, years of, like biographies. That's just my preference. But, I mean, I'm, this is one of the classics. I mean, people keep this book and pass it down to generations. I mean, there's been... Grand, I was reading about this book and watched some reviews, and there's been grandmothers that pass the, the book down to their granddaughters and, and things like this. So, obviously, it's a classic. It needs to probably be on your shelf, um, and I would totally recommend it. So, Gift from the Sea, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope it was an interesting perspective, me being a male reader, where uh, this book has typically been uh, speaking to, to women. So... But I think it transcends genders. I really do. I think I think the, the lessons in here and the wisdom that she provides relates to everyone. So, uh, Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh.